Hello and welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the classes of Killing Floor 2 once again, but this time we're going to be talking about how well they do in solo. I decided to split this video up. Uh, I'm filming this right after doing the multiplayer setup, but it was kind of taking longer than I thought. So let's do this really quick as a solo ranking as to how good these classes are in a solo mode for just playing on Hell on Earth. This is going to be more straightforward than the last build where it kind of depends and every class can be good depending on who's combining what, who's playing what. You can get a really good mixture of stuff there. In solo, it's all up to you and just whatever your class can do. And certain classes do certain things a whole lot better. First up, we got Berserker, which Berserker for solo is like probably S tier. Berserker is very tanky. They're very good in the 1v1. They can move around pretty easy. Their weapons are very cheap. It's very easy to get to a full build as Berserker. They start off with a fairly strong early game since they are extra tanky and can block and parry. Once you have those block and parries down, Solo mode is not very hard for Berserker, even on like the most difficult maps. Commando is C tier. Commando is probably one of the weakest classes to play solo. They can be pretty rough to play there because they don't generally have extra survivability. They can have a little bit, but not extra movement speed like Berserker. They're not as tanky as Berserker. The assault rifles are okay for killing most things in the game. It can be kind of rough once you get to the bigger enemies like the Flesh Pounds and the Scrakes because only certain weapons of theirs kill them very quickly like the FAL or something like the AK. And uh, you can potentially run through bullets with them. They struggle in the early game because they start out probably the weakest out of any of the classes since the AR-15 is just not way great. The pistol and knife are okay though since you can have bonus damage from them starting out. So starting out is not the worst but it's probably one of the weaker times to actually start playing uh, Commando overall. Sharpshooter's in a similar position to Commando. I would also say that they're C tier on a lot of the maps because they just don't really have extra mobility or extra survivability, at least not as much as some of the other classes do. You can be punished pretty heavily for not hitting headshots on big enemies. Indoor maps are a pain for you. It's just, it's not fun to be playing indoor maps with a uh, sharpshooter. You want big outdoor maps. And if you do have big outdoor maps, then Sharpshooter does get quite a bit better. As well as Sharpshooter can clear through the boss wave really quick, but it kind of goes both ways. You can die very fast to the boss the same way the boss can die very fast to you. So sometimes it just becomes a rush down of whoever can kill who faster. That can be a little bit annoying. Your freeze grenade can be useful in the early game. The early game is kind of rough for you though too because you're not super uh, tanky. And small Zeds can really give you trouble like the crawlers and the stalkers. That's why I put them down here. Support is probably like A or B tier. I think I'm going to put them B tier. They're not bad in solo. They have an okay start since the pump shotgun does decent damage, but you might run through ammo with it. They're decently tanky. All of their support abilities for teammates don't really help you that much, which is kind of disappointing. So they're not as good in solo as they are in multiplayer. But the shotguns are really solid. They clear up basically everything really fast besides boss wave, which boss wave can take you a little while as support. You don't have a whole ton of guns that clear up the bosses super fast. Sometimes you do. It depends on which boss you get. Because if you get like the Doomstick and you get um, King Fleshbound, you can clear it up pretty fast. Or if you have Abomination, you have the AA-12, you can clear it up pretty quick too. But it's kind of just like guessing as to which boss is going to come out. And that can be a little bit rough for you. So usually you just kind of go for a general overall strong build. And you're also kind of slow getting to your full build with support just because support can have so many weapons. You're probably going to be taking three shotguns with it or two shotguns and fully upgrading them, which is going to cost you a lot of dosh. Survivalist is up next, and they're probably one of the strongest solo classes in the game. I'd put them right up into S tier. They are very strong. They could be potentially stronger than Berserker. They're super flexible. You can build them for close range. You can build them for long range. So you can build them to whatever map you're playing. They're tankier than other classes. They can move faster than other classes. They can have better healing than other classes. They get access to basically every grenade in the game, so you can throw flashbangs or healing grenades on this and be super strong. You get access to some really strong weapons, and you can just pick whatever weapons you enjoy using the most, which is just an all-around really solid choice for them. Yeah, definitely one of the strongest, if not the strongest, for, like, solo play. Survivalist is really good. SWAT, I would probably put up into, like, A tier. SWAT has by far the easiest start out of any of the classes, or one of the easiest starts out of any of the classes. Your MP7 is amazing for clearing up the small's edge. Your flashbang is amazing. You get extra armor. You get a second pistol. You get so much value to start out with, with SWAT. So you just have the early, like the first two stages guaranteed that you're just going to run through. Or the first, you know, maybe three or four stages you're just going to run through with no problem depending on how many stages you're playing. Lowdowns can be potentially expensive depending on what you want to build. But if you grab like a nail gun early on, you can clear up everything super easy. 
your builds are pretty strong. You can clear up even the big Zeds now since they've been giving SWAT so many good weapons as of recently. And you kind of work as an off tank. The main limiting thing with SWAT is once you run through your armor. You want to keep things away from you as much as possible so that you don't break your armor. And then if your armor does get broken, then you want to potentially find more armor or finish up the wave as fast as possible to buy more armor. Because that is where you're the tankiest, and once that's gone, then you're pretty squishy. Demos up next, I'd probably say demos like B tier. The grenade pistol's pretty good to start out with, but you can run through ammo with it quickly. You're fairly squishy. You can do a lot of damage. You can definitely kill bosses very fast. You can kill big things very fast. You can also potentially blow yourself up, though. So that's not really a great thing. And if things do start swarming you, like, say, stalkers they can kill you very fast because you just you don't have any extra mobility you don't have any extra survivability outside of your reactive armor but that's a one-time thing and it doesn't help you if a bloat vomits on you or a husk blows fire on you you're gonna die regardless at that point or you're very likely to die at that point you do tend to work pretty well on indoor maps though which is kind of nice because you don't usually need a whole lot of space for your explosives to go off and you can take some of the explosives that'll go off at any range like the kaboom stick or like the Grenade Pistol, both those work. Firebug, I would also say, is probably like B tier. Firebug honestly starts out probably as strong as SWAT, or roughly as strong as SWAT, because they can clear up the first couple waves super easy. They can get some of their best weapons in tier 2, so you can immediately get to like some of your strongest stuff. And Firebug very consistently gets to boss wave. It's just sometimes you're very squishy and you can die very easily from like robots or from sirens that are screaming at you, flesh pounds that just rush you out of nowhere. You are very good at indoor maps though, which does give you a huge advantage on certain ones, and you don't need to be very accurate with them. So they're probably on the higher end of this scale in B tier, but the, I would still say they're B tier just because no extra mobility, no extra survivability. You just have the base armor, base health with them. Gunslinger is another easy S tier. You just move so fast and do so much damage that that's kind of all you need to do. It doesn't really matter that you're squishy if nothing can hit you. And so long as you can be accurate, you can clear up everything super easily. You have an okay starting round because the 1858s are decent, especially if you can hit headshots reliably with them. They're actually quite good if you want to throw upgrades into them or just keep them for a while to build up for some of the higher guns. Once you do have some of those higher guns, you just clear up anything super, super fast. Like if you have deagles, you just clear up everything. Like if you get the deagles, you can clear up anything super quick. Your boss wave is super easy because you can outrun any of the bosses and you just shred through them super fast. So Gunslinger is also probably one of the most consistent classes. Not the best on indoor maps though. Indoor maps can give you trouble. And then we have Medic and Medic I'd put up into A tier. Even with the new nerf, Medic is still very good in solo. It takes you forever to die. You do do things very slow though. You don't clear up anything super fast as Medic. But at least if you're going with Medic weapons, you can switch to some more damaging weapons if you want as Medic and just go like super tank and kill things that way. You have a pretty easy starting round though as medic just because again you're super tanky, your grenade is really useful, your pistol probably won't run out of shots, that's really nice, but then you probably want to switch that out for something that kills things a little bit faster and you can kind of struggle towards the mid game, not necessarily in terms of like just killing stuff, but just in the time that you, it's taking you to kill everything, it does take a little bit of extra time there for a medic. And then boss wave can be kind of slow, but you can just grind the boss down as medic. That's what Medic does best, is just grinding out the match until you eventually win. So that's where I'd put all the classes in solo. Tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.